Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over redshift. So let's get started. It says here that astronomers believe that the universe is expanding, that all points in the universe are getting further apart all the time. It's not that stars and galaxies are getting bigger, rather the space between all objects is expanding with time. That's a key point to remember, that stars and galaxies and matter doesn't get bigger itself, but it's space that expands over time. When space expands, any light waves travelling across it become stretched, and this is going to be key to how we explain redshift. Redshift is an example of the Doppler effect. We've already seen redshift for sources of sound waves, but now we're looking at redshift for light waves. Light from stars or galaxies that are moving away from us is shifted to longer or more red wavelengths, and this is called redshift. Conversely, light from stars or galaxies moving towards us is shifted to shorter or more blue wavelengths, and this is called blue shift. And then it says that the shifts in wavelengths are observed when studying absorption lines in the spectra of light from stellar objects. And here are some spectra showing absorption lines in this picture. Just before we look at this though, I'm going to show you a different picture which should hopefully explain why we get redshift and blue shift. So if we look at this picture, imagine we've got a galaxy here and let's say the galaxy is moving away from us. Then if the galaxy is moving away from us, the light that is coming from that galaxy to our eye is going to be stretched out. So imagine the wavelength of this wave getting bigger. So remember the wavelength would be from say this point all the way up, all the way down and back to the start. So that would be one wavelength. So imagine that wavelength getting stretched out. And when the wave gets stretched out, the wavelength of the wave is going to increase. So that means that the absorption lines in the spectra will move towards the red end of the spectrum. We're not necessarily saying that the colour of the light seen from the galaxy is turning red. That's not necessarily the case. It's just that the light is shifting towards the red end of the spectrum. And that's because red has the highest wavelength in the visible spectrum. Remember Roy G. Biv. So the light waves in this case are stretched for redshift. If, however, the galaxy was moving towards you and approaching you, then that means that the light waves from the galaxy would be decreasing in wavelength, i.e. bunching up, just like we saw in the theory video for the Doppler effect, where the waves bunch up when you're moving towards an observer. And because we're decreasing in wavelength, one of the lowest wavelengths in our visible spectrum is blue light. So the light would shift towards the blue end of the spectrum if we were looking at the absorption lines in the spectra. And again, it's not necessarily that the light is becoming blue, it's just shifting towards that end of the spectrum. So going back to this picture in our notes, now we've got the absorption lines in the spectra, Let's say when the galaxy is at rest, we observe these spectral lines. Now, if the galaxy is moving away from us, notice that the black absorption lines now move to the left. So this thick line here has been moved to here, for example, this one has been moved to here, and so on. So all of those lines have been shifted towards the red end of the spectrum, and that is what we mean by redshift, whereas the opposite is true for blue shift. So we have the lines this time moving towards the blue end of the spectrum. So this thick line has moved to the right, this line has moved to the right, and so on. Now redshift has its own symbol, and it's given the symbol of small z. And it says here that redshift z can be calculated to tell us how big the shift in wavelength is, or frequency, and therefore how far away different stellar objects are, or whether they are moving towards or away from us. So we're going to see that it depends on the sign of Z as to whether an object is moving away or an object is moving towards us. So here's your equation, and it's basically a ratio of wavelengths. So Z equals lambda observed minus lambda rest divided by lambda rest. Where Z is the redshift, which has no units, so it's just a number. Lambda observed is the observed wavelength of light from the star measured in meters, and lambda rest is the wavelength of light emitted by the star measured in meters. And then it says to note that a negative value of redshift corresponds to a blue shift. So if we get a positive value of z here, then that means that the galaxy or star is moving away from us. And if we get a negative value of z, that means the galaxy or star is moving towards us. And one last thing to point out in this equation is that often in questions, you'll need to decide which wavelength is lambda observed and which wavelength is lambda rest if you're given two wavelengths. And a key way to distinguish between these is that lambda observed will usually be the wavelength observed from a distance. So this wavelength lambda observed would usually be the wavelength of spectral lines observed in the lab, where it's really far away from the source of the light itself. Whereas lambda rest is going to be in the frame of reference of the source itself. So that's going to be right next to the actual source of light. So lambda observed will be the one that is shifted, whereas lambda rest is the one that, that is not shifted. Or another thing to remember is that if you've got red shift instead of blue shift, lambda observed will just be a larger number than lambda rest. We've also got another equation for redshift, and this one is to do with a ratio of speeds, or velocities. So it says here that for galaxies moving at non-relativistic speeds, less than 0.1 times the speed of light, or less than 10% of the speed of light, 
redshift is also the ratio of the recessional velocity of the galaxy V to the velocity of light C. So all we mean by recessional velocity is the velocity of the galaxy as it's moving away. So Z equals V over C is our new equation, where Z is the redshift with no units again, V is the recessional velocity of the galaxy measured in meters per second, and C is the speed of light measured in meters per second. And lastly, it says to note that sometimes it may be useful to equate the above two equations for Z when you don't know the value of Z and are trying to calculate one of the other variables. That is, you might want to equate lambda observed minus lambda rest over lambda rest is equal to V over C. Another thing you might often be asked to do is to calculate Z using one of these two equations and then plug your answer for Z into the other one to find out a different variable such is the recessional velocity or one of these wavelengths. Lastly, I'm just going to show you a quick animation to summarize the redshift and blue shift ideas. So you can just ignore all the text here, but we've got some hydrogen spectra here and it says that this is the source and this is the observed. So if we move our slider here from zero to a positive Z value of 0 0.1, then that's a positive value of Z, which means we get redshift. So you'll notice that our observed spectral lines have shifted towards the red end of the spectrum to the right here. If we go back to zero though, and then we go to a negative value of Z to minus 0 0.1, you'll notice this time the spectral lines are shifting towards the blue end of the spectrum to the left. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.